हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द लेक्चर नंबर फोर ऑफ वीक एट ऑफ एन पी टी एल मूक कोर्स ऑन लेजर बेस्ड मैनुफैक्चरिंग इन दिस वीक वी आर स्टडिंग वेरियस एडवांसमेंट्स ऑफ लेजर एप्लीकेशन इन मैनुफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस दिस लेक्चर इज डेडिकेटेड टू एन इम्पॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ लेजर्स इन मैनुफैक्चरिंग दैट इज अ रॉक ड्रिलिंग सो लेट इज बिगिन अवर डिस्कशन ऑन लेजर बेस्ड रॉक ड्रिलिंग सो रॉक्स आर naturally occurring coherent aggregates of one or more minerals combined in different ways and having various properties so as we know and as we are uh, dealing with various rocks around us in our society our domestic life and in the laboratories as well the rocks are having the coherent aggregates of various types of minerals so what do you mean by minerals here so minerals are naturally occurring chemical compounds and by having various combinations of these minerals we can have a variety of rocks which are having very exciting colors very good uh, mechanical properties so what are the various types of rocks which are available around us these we can classify in three groups first is igneous rocks then sedimentary rocks and the metamorphic rocks the igneous rocks are formed through solidification of magma or lava and they are hardest among all types of the rock materials so there are basically two types of igneous rocks are there that is intrusive rocks and extrusive rocks basically the granite and the diorite with gabbro are some of the examples of this intrusive rocks while pumice obsidian and basalt are the examples of this extrusive rocks as far as the sedimentary rocks are concerned these rocks are formed by compaction of sediments and there are distinct layered in these types of rock materials these rocks are easy to crumble they can easily deformed and we can have a variety of types of these rocks such as clastic chemical and the organic types of sedimentary rocks sandstone and conglomerate these are the examples of clastic rocks while iron ore rock salt are the chemical rocks while the coal and limestones are the examples of organic rocks as far as the metamorphic rocks are concerned these are transformed rocks from the older rocks and they do have the characteristics that they may or may not have the layers but they are relatively harder with respect to the sedimentary rocks so we can have the foliated types of the metamorphic rocks or non foliated types of metamorphic rocks slate gneiss and phyllite these are the foliated rock examples whereas the marble quartzite and hornsfels are the examples of non foliated rocks so it is common and it is essential as well in oil exploration we have to drill the rocks conventionally the rocks are being drilled by using mechanical tools that is a drill bit but manufacturing of a harder drill bit itself is a very difficult task because rocks strength is quite high they are brittle and we have to generate or we have to manufacture a drill bit which will sustain in this kind of conditions so the extremely robust drill bit its design manufacturing and the rugged bottom hole assembly these are challenging things as far as the mechanical rock drilling is concerned therefore it is obvious that we should go for some new perforation technique and one of the new perforation technique is by using the lasers so as we have seen the various advantages or the characteristics of the lasers which are helping to process the high strain material in a similar way laser can be used to drill the rocks as well so some of the experimental studies we will be seeing in our coming slides as we have seen that the characteristics of the laser particularly the monochromaticity coherence and 
the application or generation of broad range of power density is attracting wide applications of lasers in rock drilling. It is not only the monochromaticity or coherence and power density, the ease in application and ease in control, these are also helping or increasing the value of the laser in the case of the rock drilling applications. Now, let us see how exactly we can manufacture or how exactly we can uh, perforate the rocks in a laser based rock drilling. So, on your screen you can see that we got a sandstone material and we are applying a laser beam energy. So, as the laser beam energy is applied, so there is generation of heat energy at the interaction or at the interface of laser with the, the sandstone. These heat energy will get conducted inside the sandstone or the rock material. If we continuously apply the laser energy here, there is increase in the temperature and that temperature may go beyond the melting point temperature. So, melting of the material will get started. After some time by application of the inert gas, we can take out the molten material outside the cavity. However, the heat conduction is continued. So, the heat conduction is going on inside the work material and due to increase in temperature inside the work material, we get certain portion of which the material properties are getting changed. So, that particular zone is called as the heat affected zone. So, when we stop the operation of laser application, there is formation of bubbles as well and these bubbles are nothing but the entrapped gases during the solidification process. These bubbles will get released and we, we can have the pores due to these bubbles. In addition to these bubbles, there are formation of cracks as well and these cracks are due to the residual thermal stresses which are generated in the heat affected zone and it is expected or it is desired to have more cracks in the sandstone processing by using the lasers or laser based rock drilling. To have a detailed study, let us take a case and this case is of a sandstone and it is machined by using a CO2 laser system and we are having a hole of around 25 mm and the depth of the hole is about 50 mm. So, these are the material properties of the sandstone material. And now let us look at what are the results that uh, we got. The sandstone workpiece is kept on work table and we apply the laser beam energy over the sandstone material. The laser beam energy is applied in the range of 1000 watt to 1800 watt and the laser irradiation time was around 2 seconds to 6 seconds. So, after the laser perforation, the morphologies of the cracking were observed and measured by using the scanning electron microscope. So, let us see the results which we got. So, on your screen, you can see the effect of number of laser perforations on the rock fragmentation. So, we need to focus more on the rock fragmentation. We have to fragment the rocks so that we can increase the material removal. So, instead of having a very large size of the laser beam application, we can have the multiple perforations and these multiple perforations are creating the cracks and as there is a network of the cracks, then we can remove that cracked material or the fragmented material from the site of application. So, in the figure A, you can see there is only one hole has been drilled and this hole has created a wider cracks. So, this crack has been propagated towards the circumferential direction and there is another crack which is moving in this particular direction. As we drill another hole, so now the network of the cracks is getting started over here. So, just look at the third hole is also there. So, there is another circumferential crack has been started. In addition to this drilled hole, you can see a pink region or little brown region around the bore. 
So these brown or the pink region is the heat affected zone. So you can notice the heat affected zone here as well. So this particular region is the HAZ. So this region is also the HAZ. Now in this case we are having four bores which are drilled and now you can notice that there is a formation of network of the cracks. So from these results we can say that the laser perforation was successfully carried out for 1600 watt of laser application and this 1600 watt is generating 509.6 watt per mm square of the density. Each bore is accompanied with the cracks which are around the hole during the laser perforation. The perforating tests were done on the same sample with same laser parameters and the cracks were created around every hole with similar morphology. So you can notice that all the holes are having the same process parameters and their morphology is also quite similar. The cracks are connected with laser perforation holes and there are also interconnected cracks between neighboring laser perforation holes. So when these holes are generated, so the cracks are also getting generated and there is interconnection. There is a networking of these particular cracks. Now let us study the effect of laser power on the laser perforation of sandstone. So here we will just vary the laser power. So on your screen you can see 5 pictures of the sandstone samples and these sandstone samples are perforated by using laser with varying the power. So four bores are drilled. So in first case the power was 1000 watt, then the second is 1200 watt, this is 1000, 1200, 1400, 16 and 1800 watt. The duration of the laser application was 2 seconds and now you just look at the quality or the, the now you just try to note the formation of the cracks around the holes. So here as only one crack can be noticed with every hole. So as we increase the power there is a formation of a network crack over here and the width of the crack of the individual hole is also little increased. With the enhancement from 200 watt to 400 watt you just notice there are wide cracks which are formed and there is a prominent networking of the holes or the bores. With further enhancement you can notice a very wide crack which has been formed and there is a formation of the cross networking as well from this diagonal bores and with further enhancement you can notice there is very easy fragmentation has been occurred of this particular sandstone rock. As far as the graphical analysis is concerned, let us find out the effect of laser power on the diameter. So on y axis we have taken the diameter of laser perforation. We varied the laser power from 1000 to 1800 watt. You can just notice that as the laser power is increasing up to 1600 watt, there is enhancement in the diameter. However, there is a significant jump from 1600 to 1800 watt. So the diameter is increased from about 1.8 mm to about 2.2 mm, so little more than 2.2 mm when we increase from 1600 to 1800 watt. 
Similarly, we can also notice the depth of the laser perforation. So, there as well there is enhancement with respect to the laser power in the depth. As far as the width of the cracks are concerned, you just notice from 1000 watt to 1600 watt there is an enhancement. However, there is a huge jump from 1600 to 1800. Same thing also notice for the circumferential length of the side cracks and maximum depth of the side cracks. There also you can just notice that there is a huge jump from about 1600 to 1800 watt. For circumferential length of the side crack, you can notice that there is no significant effect. For all the laser powers, the circumferential length of the side crack was almost same. The same is with the maximum depth of side crack from 1000 watt to 1600 watt. This can be summarized as the diameter and depth of laser perforation hole even the maximum width, maximum depth and the circumferential length, all these things have been measured carefully and it has been noticed that all these values are increasing with laser power. However, there is a rapid increase after the 1600 watt. Now, let us look at what is the effect of the irradiation time on the morphology. So, here you just look at the 5 pictures and these pictures are noted for time of 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds and 6 seconds. So, this is 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 seconds of time and by varying or by increasing the irradiation time what happens. So, here it is a prominently noticed that for higher duration that we apply, there is fragmentation or breakage in the specimen itself. So, you just notice a very wide crack which got generated and there is very easy fragmentation which occurred that lead to our intended purpose that is the removal or you can say the breakage of the sandstone specimen. For 6 second, you just notice that here there is a very prominent fragmentation or the breakage has occurred. For 4 seconds also there was moderate, but for 2 second there was no prominent segmentation was occurred. So, we have to apply the laser energy for a longer duration of time to have the prominent fragmentation. Now, same thing can further be analyzed by using the graphs. So, we can study the effect of time for the diameter of the perforation. There is a linear increase with respect to the time. As far as the depth is also concerned, there is a increase with respect to the time. For the width of the crack, again there is increase with respect to the time and the same thing would be there for the circumferential length of the side cracks even. So, here you notice for the laser power variation, there was no effect or there is no significant variation in the circumferential length of the side cracks. However, the circumferential length of the side cracks is influenced by the time. So, this is to be noted. So, the time of application of laser is very influential as far as the circumferential length of the side cracks. And these circumferential length or circumferential side cracks are leading to the fragmentation effectively. Well, let us look at the fracture morphology of the sandstone by the laser perforation. So, on your screen you can see the scanning electron microscope images. So, we are having around 5 images. The first image that is image A is showing the cross section of laser perforation. So, this is the cross section of the laser perforation. The image B is corresponding to 
the image related to the bottom of the laser perforation. So, this is the bottom of the laser perforation. C and D both are the sides of the laser perforation and the D is showing some cracks around the laser perforation. So, these are some of the cracks which are shown around the laser perforation. A very smooth glaze layer was formed on the inner wall of the laser perforation. So, if you notice the picture A, so here you notice that there is a very smooth or glazed surface at the inner wall. However, there are many holes are noticed or pores are noticed. So, these are the pores which you can notice over here. These are due to the release of the entrapped gases. At the bottom, the width of laser perforation became narrow which is related to the characteristics of the laser beam heat source. So, at the bottom, the width is low. So, if you just try to find out the cross section of the laser beam based bore which is generated. So, this is the bottom of the irradiation or the bore. So, naturally the width is small with respect to the width of the opening at the surface. So, this W2 is small than W1, it is due to the application of laser beam energy that we have seen in our previous class as well. This laser beam energy is following the Gaussian distribution. So, at the center there is a maximum energy that be being applied and we are getting approximately the reverse image of the Gaussian beam as the manufactured cavity over here. At the edges of the laser perforation, there were many dense pores. So, that pores you can see at the edges. So, edges are here. So, there are dense pores which you can notice over here. So, these are the very dense pores. So, here also there is a very uh, prominent pore that we can notice. Furthermore, cracks were formed and propagated along the inner wall. So, you can notice the cracks are generated and they are getting the propagated in the inner wall. Close to the laser perforation, a large number of cracks and breakages appeared which were helpful for decreasing the strength of the sandstone. So, these cracks or the perforations or the pores are highly uh, invited, highly uh, desired because they are reducing the strength of the sandstone and we can easily fragment and then we can remove the sandstone material easily. So, with this uh, the interesting application of the rock uh, drilling by using the lasers, let me summarize today's lecture. So, we have seen the rock drilling, its applications. We have also seen various types of rocks being used in the industry and around us. Then mechanical rock drilling, what are the problems or the limitations of mechanical rock drilling? The limitations. Then we have seen the mechanism of laser rock drilling. So, laser rock drilling, it is we have seen the mechanism. And a case study, a detailed case study on effect of various parameters such as laser power, and time, time of application in case of processing of a material, rock material that is sandstone. So, with this interesting 
discussion uh, i am stopping for today's lecture thank you for watching this video goodbye mm -hmm.